All right, everybody, welcome to module three. We are going to teach this to you live. We are talking about optimal hydration. And if you've, if you've been on these webinars, you've seen me, you know, I don't go anywhere without this water bottle. This thing is my friend. So it's, it's, a, it's a combination of drinking the right quantity of water and the right quality of water. Uh, I find that when, when I do my initial phone calls with clients, I was on the phone with a client or a potential client today who was referred to me in Florida. And I kind of, I ask him the same questions I ask everybody, you know, tell me about your diet. Tell me about your exercise. Tell me about how much sleep you get. Tell me, do you take vitamins? Um, and then tell me how much water you drink. And invariably people are like, Oh, I drink a lot of water. Okay. How much? Oh, I don't know. I drink like three of those like water bottle things a day. Okay. What size? liter bottles or half liter bottles oh let me go check turns out he it, they're the half liters so he drinks three half liters of water a day um which as you know or you're about to learn uh, is nowhere near enough if you're trying to get into weight loss mode if you're really trying to move the needle and get into momentum okay so i'm going to show you a couple of resources here um this is kind of one of my favorite um, modules to teach because it's really the simplest. It's really the most cut and dry. It's the easiest one to grasp. And as you're going through the program here, you can attack this thing. This is your journey. You can attack this however you want. You can attack it and say, you know what, I'm going to do all five daily disciplines right from the get-go because I want to get the maximum results. Or you can take a little bit more of a, a layered approach and say, you know what, this week I'm going to focus on this habit and then in week two i'm going to build on that and add in another one i think starting with the water uh is a great way to is a great way to go um because it's just so simple it's so easy to um uh score it you know yourself hey did i drink my water or not did i did i meet the threshold or not so uh, i'm gonna share my screen here i want you guys to see a couple of things here first of all if you have not logged in to your members area, this is what it looks like, okay? Um, in the email you got for registering for the webinar today, it should have said longevity access, or if you're watching this in the replay, you know how to get access to this page. Put in your email and password, and you scroll on down here to where it says five daily disciplines. Uh, this first one here is a basic training video, kind of, it's the whole shebang in about an hour, and then we go deep into each of the modules. So we already covered exercise, we covered the meal plan and diet. Tonight we're covering optimal hydration and this will be uploaded here in the recording, okay? Um, at the end, if you have not, uh, you know, if you wanna get your hands on one of these water bottles, stick around. I'm gonna show you uh, the website where you, can, uh, where, you can, where you can pick one of these up for yourself. Um, and you know, it's two separate things. It's the actual water bottle and then the filter. The cool thing is this water bottle should last you just about forever. Uh, it's high quality plastic. It's not going to leach anything uh, into your water. And these filters, uh, I got an email from a friend today. She's like, oh, she's like, I can't suck through the straw anymore. What's wrong? I'm like, you just need a new filter. That's all it is. So the filters, you're going to change those out every two, maybe three months. It depends on how often you're using it. Okay. If you're drinking as much as you should, and you're only drinking through this thing, you don't have like uh, filtered water at home or anything. Might, you might go through this, um, you know, every couple of months, but uh, what you're going to see here is it's absolutely worth it when it comes to uh, improving the quality of your water. So um, let me just show you a couple of slides here. We we'll go over to PowerPoint. Uh, Neil, if you would, or uh, or Stephen. Hey, Stephen, how you doing, buddy? Stephen, would you give me a thumbs up? Can you see my uh, slides? Okay. Okay. Right on. All right. So we're going to go through this. Uh, I just got four slides here. And this is some stuff that I didn't know about water. I used to think if I was, if I was drinking out of these water bottles, you know, Dasani, Aquafita, Deer Park, I don't care what the brand is, any of these, you know, most of these bottles, bottled water, is just tap water, okay? It's been filtered to make it taste better, but it's just tap water. They haven't done anything to get rid of all the chemicals that are found uh, in most of our, our tap water. And here's the problem, the plastic, that it leaches those chemicals into the water over time. Particularly if you do what I did, is I would go to Costco or whatever and I would stock up on water bottles, I'd get the water bottles and I'd leave them in the trunk of my car or in my back seat, especially in the summertime when it's hot. Well, what I didn't realize is when these things get hot and heat up, 
that just accelerates the leaching of the chemicals. And, you know, I mean, guys, I mean, this is one of those things that can contribute to us having the man boobs, okay? Uh, having all these hormones and all this bad stuff in here because you're drinking all this stuff. I'm talking about industrial chemicals, the pesticides, lead, arsenic, bacteria, parasites, hormones, okay? You don't have any protection against this stuff. You don't know what is in your water. Every once in a while, the water company will send out like a test in the mail and, uh, and they'll say, hey, we tested the water. Here's what's in there. But there's still a lot of unknown, a lot of stuff they're not certain about. And to me, once I got educated on um, how important, not just to get the right quantity of water, but um, the quality of water as well, uh, I said, I got to get one of these bottles. And uh, uh, I, take it, I take it with me uh, e everywhere I go. Now, this thing here, it, it, it's about uh, three quarters of a liter. So you drink two of these, that's like a liter and a half, okay? So if you drink four of these a day, right? You drink four of these a day, that's like three liters, okay? And that's usually what I do. I drink three liters through this, and then I drink another liter to two liters from um, the filtered water at my house uh, when I'm at home, or, or I'll drink um, uh, sparkling water, right? That's how, I, that's how I get the rest of my water in here. But you don't want the BPAs. This is a BPA-free uh, bottle. Uh, and how does it get all these contaminants out? Well, it's kind of cool. It's got uh, multiple layers here. It's got uh, down at the bottom, it's got that activated carbon from coconut shells. That gets the really small particles and chlorine and all the dangerous stuff out. The zeolite there in the middle gets rid of all the pharmaceuticals and metals uh, that, that contribute to it not tasting so good. And then the silver lining, um, aquaspear, antimicrobial, uh, gets rid of all the bacteria and viruses so that this thing stays safe uh, for the life of the filter. So guys, once I, um, uh, we're not talking about that tonight. We're only talking about water. Uh, once, um, once I learned this and once I, I figured that stuff out, it was, um, it was a game changer for me. And I think a lot of people, a lot of people just have no idea how much water they're drinking. So I would encourage you what I tell everybody to do, if this is your first week on the program, this is your first week making some changes. Don't like, you got to give yourself a chance to win. You want to have a long enough runway. Okay. You don't, don't shoot yourself out of the water because you try and to do too much the first week where it's just unachievable and you feel like a failure because you didn't, you didn't get it all done. Um, you know, you want to, uh, you know, definitely, definitely give yourself a chance to win. And so for the first week, uh, you just want to keep score, just keep score. So the, the, the five questions you want to ask yourself during your first week. And again, you, and just having paying attention to this and reinforcing it when we're on these Wednesday night calls, or if you're watching this in the replay, like pull out a pen right now, Give yourself a score, write it on a three by five card and use that to set your goal for the next week to get a little bit better, okay? And we'll go around the horn here for those of you who are on live, if you wanna share live, but, but here's, here's the things I'd like to know, okay? These are the things that you wanna know for yourself. If you're watching this in, in, the, in the replay and you wanna type it into the comments, go for it. Um, but number one, uh, how clean did you eat this week, okay? Out of seven days, how many of those days did you eat perfectly balanced meals, you didn't cheat, you didn't have any genetically modified organisms. You didn't have processed food. You stayed away from the sugar. You stayed away from the bread, the pasta, the rice. You know, now, if, you're, if you've been at the program for a while and you're down to your target weight and you're more in maintenance mode, well, then you know you can get away with eating some of this stuff once in a while. But I'm talking to those of you who are trying to get into momentum. You're still trying to figure out how to put all these pieces of the puzzle together. And I'm telling you, cut all that stuff out. The diet is probably one of the hardest things for most people. Okay. Physically, it's only hard for a week. Okay. To go through the detox. And then it takes roughly 30 days for your body to become fat adapted where now you can actually burn fat as fuel. And once you get into that fat adapted state, guess what? Now you can get away with eating some carbs once in a while, but you may want to incorporate some of the restricted uh, eating window, like the time restricted eating, like intermittent fasting, right? So if you know you have like a, a wedding you're going to or a vacation or something where you're going to have a big dinner, it's okay. But, you know, just fast leading up to that, right? And earn that meal, okay? Make sure you dial up your exercise, get your, get your, get your walks in, do it, maybe do a little high intensity interval training before that. So you get that kind of afterburn effect, right? But for your first 30 days, like if you want to get into momentum, you got to, you got to cut everything out. All right. So score yourself in the last seven days. How many days were you perfect? How many days did you, three days, five days, seven days, 
I'm telling you, like I, I never had a single week where I was perfect in all five daily disciplines. You know, most days I was at least four out of five. Some days I was only three, a couple days I got way out of whack. Um, but if I knew there was going to be a day where I was going to cheat on my diet, uh, I would make sure I dial up the, the exercise. Um, or if I knew that I wasn't going to get enough sleep because I had to get up early or I was up late, whatever, I'd make sure I get plenty of water in. I'd make sure I took my vitamins. Okay. So the five daily disciplines really work together, but during your first week, let's talk accountability. You know, what was your meal plan like? Okay. How many days were you perfect? Okay. Uh, what about sleep? Did you get eight hours a night? What was your average over the course of the week? Okay. Give yourself a point if you averaged eight hours uh, a day. Uh, number three, how much water? So how much water do you want to drink? Guys, the magic number is uh, 100 or the magic number is half your body weight in ounces. So if I'm 200 pounds, it means I want to drink 100 ounces, which is going to come in somewhere between three and four liters. Now, if you're trying to lose weight, gentlemen, we're looking at four liters. Uh, women, usually about three liters. Anything over three liters is great. In the summertime, if you're going to be outside in the heat, you can increase that. So in the summer, it's not unusual for me to drink five, even six liters of water a day. Um, and it's just a habit that I've created. I used to only drink, you know, a liter or two a day. Um, and yes, it did take my kidneys, did have to adjust and took a look getting used to. Yes, I did have to, you know, urinate more frequently and I had to kind of time it out during my day, particularly if I was on the road driving, you know, you got you to gotta figure that stuff out. Um, but your body does adapt and get used to it and your body will respond. It's probably one of the single biggest things you can do to help, you know, detox your body and, and really start to, uh, um, get, let your body heal and get things start to balance out. So guys, that's water. That's optimal hydration. That's the nuts and bolts of what I want to share as we go around the, the horn here. Uh, we'd love to hear um, how you guys are doing, uh, for the week with your check-ins and, um, you know, key in specifically on water. If you learned anything from this or if you have any questions specifically on water, uh, let me know. But uh, Neil, I'm going to start with you, buddy. Um, how you doing? I think I just got you muted still. Uh, can you hear me? We got you loud and clear. Hey, well, let me take a drink of my water real quick. There you go. I'll join you. This thing's great. I'm kind of like you. I uh, I got filtered water at home, so that's convenient. You know, just load up. I got a cup, I use, a glass I use, and I can put about a liter and a half in it. So I'm drinking out of that most of the time. But when, when I leave the house, this goes with me everywhere. Um, I don't know where I might end up at. And if I got to get to a water fountain, I'm filling this up. I'm not drinking out of the water fountain. I don't know if they put filters in there or not. Even at a restaurant, they say, well, we got filtered water. I said, really? Well, how, when's the last time y'all changed the filter? I says, just give me some water. I'll pour it right in here. I'll drink it in the restaurant. So, yeah, the water's a big thing. You know, I might be mistaken, but isn't there fluoride in water? There is. It, isn't, there that is. a metal, isn't that metal? I mean, that's just like metal that they never found a use for so somebody years ago decided well hey we need to keep these guys that are are mining this fluoride that they can't sell anywhere else let's put it in the toothpaste and in the water you know let's make some use out of this so yeah you're drinking that heavy metal and that's not the only metal in, in the water we drink uh think about it too you know that that water bottle, just the plastic water bottles, and the flimsier they are, the more chemicals they use to make it. And I don't care if it's in the heat or not, it's still leaching those chemicals out. Mm -hmm. And here's what I've heard, and I've heard it from several different sources, but like a teaspoon of that bottled water for you guys, that stops your testosterone from uh, producing for about four hours. So if you're drinking that all day, you know, that's that's pretty nasty, I think. And I was the same way. I had I didn't have a clue. I was just told to drink water. I drink water, you know. But and I had no anyway. idea. I had no idea. Like I used to notice that I would chug those water bottles, and I I would feel something, like you know, it would like quench my thirst. But once I learned about that, I, thanks for bringing that up. That that statistic that it does actually lower your testosterone it makes total sense as I kind of like think back of like 
how I felt, you know, like I did kind of feel kind of imbalanced. So um, it's uh, blew me away. Now, the other thing about that I forgot to mention is um, you talk about drinking water in the restaurant. Like I tip, I used to like always drink water with my meal and I'd be like, oh, I'm being healthy. I'm drinking with the meal. I've kind of stopped. Like I'll drink water kind of like right up until the meal. But when it's time to eat now, like I try not to drink um, anything with the meal. Like I drink water right up until because it kind of helps fill me up and makes me, you know, so I'm not as hungry. Um, And it kind of gets your body ready for digestion. But when I'm eating then, I like, I want my digestive system to do its thing. I want like, and it starts with, you know, your saliva, you chew your food up. It starts with the bile uh, produced in your, in your liver and stored in your gallbladder, uh, the, the stomach acids that you have, um, and all the, all the, 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 the liquid, the liquefaction and the, uh, the breaking down that happens in your intestines. Uh, and if you're drinking lots of water with your meal, you're kind of washing that stuff out of the way and you're, you're disrupting some of the, the digestive process. So I try not to drink my water that, and that's a shift for me. I used to like, I would have like, I'd get my Subway sandwich or my, my Big Mac or whatever. And I, I down it with one of these plastic water bottles. So like all kinds of like bad stuff from the chemicals in the water. Um, but also just like the flow of water disrupting all those digestive enzymes. So I, I try and shut off my water while I'm, I don't drink water while I'm eating. And then I try and wait, you know, a good half hour, 45 minutes after my meal before I start sipping, sipping on anything. Now, if I'm out to eat, you know, and I'm like, you know, if it's a, a cheap meal or I'm having some wine, like, sure, I'm going to enjoy a glass of wine with, with my steak or, or, or whatever. But I'm talking about, you know, like nine meals out of 10. Right. I, I try and avoid drinking, um, drinking fluids with the meal. You know, uh, water also say, you know, you're overweight, but I mean, you're not picking out all the time on hamburgers and stuff. You know, you're just eating, you know, mashed potatoes and gravy and, you know, meat for dinner and that kind of stuff. If you drink a lot of water, if you drink a lot more water than you're normally used to, even just that will help you lose weight. It'll start flushing out a lot of stuff too. Yep. Um, so, I mean, the water is more beneficial than just hydrating ourselves. It, it, it helps flush all the stuff out of your body and fat cells too. So, um, but the purer you can get it, like we do, the better. I mean, this is the best thing since sliced bread right here. I mean, it's, uh, uh, I think it's, I think I could say it's a lifesaver and not to mention what you did not bring up. Cause I never was an environmentalist. I wasn't one of these guys, you know, that, Hey man, I got to recycle everything. But then once you start learning about where all those plastic water bottles are going and they're going into the earth and everything else. And you got this, Yeah. you don't have to be, I mean, just think how many water bottles a year you're not contributing to the, uh, uh, you know, the health of the plant. I'm not one of those, you know, Guys, well, I am, I am to, a, I am to a degree, you know, and I, you know, I spent five years with a, with a company, um, that was all about green energy and, you know, saving the planet, all this good stuff. I just thought it was a really good cause and it was super simple. And I, I did a lot of volunteer work with them, uh, went down to Brazil, planted trees in the rainforest. Um, but one of the things we would do locally here in Washington, DC is we would get out and do these, these cleanups. Like we would go up to Baltimore down to the waterfront and and we'd go through the neighborhoods that were like close to the waterfront and we'd just pick up trash and it's like disgusting, but you, it's just, it's just, it boggles the mind how like people just throw all, they just throw their trash everywhere and all these bottled waters would congregate down to the waterfront, like in the rocks and they're messing up the ecosystem. And here's the thing, you should care about this is because the fish are eating this stuff, right? And it's, uh, which means that if you're eating the fish, you're going to eat that stuff. That's why, you know, I'm very particular about where I get my meat, where I get my fish, where I get my chicken, all that stuff. Uh, but cleaning up, the, cleaning up the environment is, is a big deal. Uh, this obviously contributes to not as many bottles going in the, uh, in the river, in the, um, in the environment. So. Well, I've, uh, since I've started learning all this stuff, I'll be honest with you. I wasn't, you know, I wasn't a litter bug or nothing like that. I was always cleaned up. Never threw, you know, didn't throw stuff out the car. If we went out on a picnic at the beach, we'd always gather our trash like we're supposed to, right? So they're just tossing it everywhere. But I've started recycling. I mean, I, I've even started doing that now. I just, 
got a separate bin. I put all the plastics and everything else in. And so I don't know. It's kind of a mind changer once you start learning. Well, welcome to the 21st century. It's kind of strange, though. I mean, I'm proud of you, man. Oh, yeah. It's kind of, it's kind of neat. But, yeah. But anyway, Very cool. The water, the water is the key, man. And uh, so I know we're on water today, so I won't get into everything else. Yeah. And, yeah. So let's, let's keep it moving. I want to hear from everybody else. Uh, Frank, let's go on over to you, buddy. And then uh, Julie will come to you because I know we didn't get to you last time. And then, I, Stephen, I got you on here, too. So. Mr. Turner, what's going on in Arlington? Hey, what's up, Hannibal? Rock and roll. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, so for uh, – I know tonight's about water. Uh, so for me um, – so when we lived in Germany, we had gone to, like, this water delivery service. Somebody had a dog and they, that passed away from cancer, and they says, oh, the water's bad. And then they came out and they did all the lead testing and people were popping here and there. And so we went to that water service stuff and uh, I didn't drink that much of it. We didn't go through it like we are now, but um, I've always hated drinking water, you know, high school, college, athletics, I'll drink anything but water. Um, and, you know, so getting off the, the colas, if you will, I know that's probably silly, Cokes, uh, water was big help. So um, I don't have one of those bottles because I just lose bottles. And to me, that would be heartache. But I have four of these, and these are 24 ounces. So if I fill them up just enough, I can get 25. So that kind of gets me the 100. And it's BPA free, right? That looks like it's a real thick plastic. Yeah, on the bottom it says BPA is free. That's that's what that's what you want, right? I mean that's I mean that 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 bottle's totally fine for like storing the water. Uh, yeah. You don't have to worry about anything leaching. Uh, the advantage of one like this is it's got a filter that's built in, so you can fill it anywhere. So are you trying to fill it like from the house, or have you got filtered water at home? Or yeah, so what I do is I buy distilled water. Hold it purify I'm not sure which um, I had started out with spring water and I switched over to the purified I think where it's or distilled I'm not sure which but they deliver like five gallon bottles mm -hmm. and so we were probably going through two every two weeks in Germany and you know that's what we're like you're using that water to feed the dogs and everything and now we're going through five every two weeks so the water consumption's gone up which is good and we've got one less kid drinking out of it because grace is away at college so um for us that works they deliver it i i'd hate to lug around a five gallon jug i'm just not as young as i used to be but um it's helped. And when we run out of water, man, I'm like, oh, you know, we've done that a couple times where I didn't get out the bottles. They actually come tomorrow and I got the bottles out. But it's a good way to measure it, too. Mm -hmm. So we go through those four or five, get those out. We know that we're drinking enough water. Um, I'll tell you, the big thing for me is if I don't get I got to get one in before breakfast and I got to get two in before lunch. or I got no chance. I'm not going to hit the four. You know, it's just tough to suck down, uh, you know, 72 ounces of water in like the last six, eight hours of the day. So for me, that's... I agree. That's, Get it in early. Get it in earlier in the day. Particularly those, like I was on the phone with a potential client today. He's like, I'm addicted to coffee. He's like, the reason I get out of bed in the morning is so I can have my coffee. I'm like, all right, well, you can still have your coffee, but you got to earn your coffee. You got to like drink at least a half a liter, if not a full liter of water while your coffee's brewing before you have your coffee. Cause it, cause otherwise you're chasing it. Like you said, you're playing catch up all day and it's tough. Yeah. And I mean, you know, now, um, you know, I don't get thirsty much, which is a good side effect. You know, I just drink water. Um, and, uh, I'm really not drinking much of anything else. So, um, you know, I've had the occasional and it's been very sparse of beer here and there. Mm -hmm. You gotta celebrate a little bit, but um, yeah. All in all, I mean, 
Cokes. I haven't really had any Cokes since I started this. And um, you're down, you're down how much? Are you, are you, you I'm, got... I'm probably 18. So I weighed in today. I weighed 187. That's actually 19 from my start. Nice. And I've kind of been, I've kind of been level for a while. Um, I've given it a push here for spring break so that, you know, that coupled with the ab challenge. Are you, are you keeping up? Are you on day three? Yeah, yeah I'm All keeping right. up. Yeah. So I'm just adding it to the end of the workouts. I'm working out pretty hard, so um, it's probably a little counterproductive to losing weight, but um, the ab challenge is good. I wouldn't do any abs. So, I tell you what, it's, it definitely is exposing my weaknesses and – like I like there's uh, like I can do push-ups all day long. Yeah, you know, the squats I can do, but like the crunches, it's like I'm pacing myself. I'm I have like the little chart printed out here, and I'm like, even though I feel better, like I feel like I could do a little bit more today. I'm like, no, for abs, I'm just gonna stick to that because because I've never in my entire life I've never been consistent with abs. I've never actually done it 30 days in a row on a progressive workout. Um, so this will be the first time ever, three days in, uh, I really want to make this a habit. I really want to see what I can get. And then at the end of 30 days, then I'll do an assessment and say, oh, okay, I can maybe dial up or dial down uh, a little bit of it. So I appreciate the accountability. I appreciate everybody else who's coming along on this, uh, this ab challenge with us. So especially Jason, Jason Perry, who's putting the videos in there every day. Um, uh, because there's no way I was doing a video this morning. I was like screaming. I was like doing my crunches and uh, it was, it was painful. So awesome. Well, Frank, I appreciate you, man. Thanks for the update. Um, let's go. Right. Uh, Julie, Julie sweet. How's my Canadian friend doing? Try and unmute you. Hey, hey there. <laughs> what's going on my friend? How are you? I'm good. Doing well. Yeah, I am happy to get on your call. <laughs> Very cool. So we've been talking about water tonight. Do you have any any uh, any two cents you want to add about what your water routine or water ritual is like, or how that's uh, how you've kind of worked that into the the routine? Well, I don't leave home without my purity bottle. I don't use it at my house because I have really wonderful water at home. But I think anywhere I go, I have that bottle with me. And it is the perfect conversation starter. Everybody wants to know what's up with the bottle. <laughs> um, yeah, so I absolutely love it. Um, and as far as tracking my water, I'm like a big water drinker. So I don't really, I don't really have to track it. I feel like I, I've always drank a ton of water. So. And I've, I've gotten to be that way. Um, but I, what for the, it took me eight weeks. It took me eight weeks of writing it down. I had, a, I had a clipboard. I'm old school. I had a clipboard. I had a little chart. And every single day I would write down how many bottles of water I had, how many ounces, uh, how many or liters. And um, after eight weeks, I got to the point where I'm like, I, I was exceeding everything in all the categories. It's like, I don't need this anymore. I don't yeah. need the crackers because the diet, the exercise, the water, the sleep, it's like it's become taking my pills, my vitamins. It's just become a habit. Um, and some things happen faster than others, but the water, it took me a good eight weeks of tracking, but, uh, that's awesome. But I mean, so it's, yeah. it's, for you. it's just a hat. It's a, it's, it's like, it's like part of who you are. It's like, it's just natural, but not everybody's like that. So, yeah, um, but I, I think it's be probably because I don't drink other things. You know what I mean? Like I'm not a, I don't, I don't drink anything that's, I don't drink my calories. Yeah. <laughs> So that's always been my rule of thumb. Like, I'm just not going to drink my calories. So yeah, that's been good. Um, yeah, so water intake's good. And I think I'm starting to like dive below the plateau I was at forever with my weight loss, which is good. So what, what, what was the plateau buster? What, did you change up anything with your routine or your meals or your exercise? Or? Well, I did a week long fast, water only. That was pretty, that was pretty radical. All right, so let's talk. So let's talk about this. I, so I have like, and t tell me the story. But like, one, I want to know wh why did you do this? Um, like, what were your expectations going? Because like, I've done like some, like the longest fast I've done is like a thirty-seven hour fast, and I, I, I got a little bit freaked out because I wasn't hungry, and I worked out three times during it. But a week-long fast that I'm very curious. Give me, give me some yeah. details. 
So I follow Dr. Jason Fung and I have read his book, The Complete Guide to Fasting. Mm -hmm. And inside of that book, I learned about the week long fast and how um, it can be a great cancer preventative because your human growth hormone just goes up so much on day five, six, seven. Um, so I really like that. So I don't know if, if you guys know my background, but I have ulcerative colitis and I had, I was diagnosed when I was like 15. Um, so from 15 until I was like mid thirties, I, I really struggled digestive with my digestive health. Um, so inflammatory bowel disease and it was terrible. And every time I would go see a specialist, they'd say, you know, your, your chances of getting bowel cancer are a lot higher than the average person. So I have to go get scopes all the time. And, um, anyways, I'm symptom free now, thanks to all of the great products, um, Elite is the one that really changed things for me. Um, anyway, so I wanted to do it for cancer preventative. That was kind of my number one. I, I just was really curious about that. But from doing the week long fast, I feel like my relationship with food has really changed. And I was talking to my husband about that today because I have a lot of like, I don't know if I would call it, call it disorder eating, but I think it m may have been just because of mm -hmm. all the illness I had in the past. Um, yeah. Yeah, so sometimes my relationship with food isn't great, and I find it hard to eat any volume of food, so I think a lot of times I eat too little. Um, anyways, I just feel like I was always, I used to be really, um, like if I missed a meal, I get really cranky, and my mood would really be crappy, and um, so that's changed for me since I started changing my diet a lot in the last like year or so, but having done the fast, I'm even less attached to food, like uh, food truly doesn't control me anymore and so, I just it was interesting it was a it was a it was a cool ex cool experience so so I know exactly I feel like I know exactly what you're talking about because I had the same experience did it kind of freak you out a little bit though do you kind of feel weird even saying that out loud like that you just look at food differently I know it kind of sounds cliche and if somebody hasn't gotten to that point they either don't believe it. They don't know what I'm talking about, but like, but that's what, does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. And I don't want to be a dieter. Um, yeah. and I've never really like, I've, I've done some diets before, but I've never been a big dieter because for me it was food was I always just had so many issues with eating food. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times my issues with eating food were eating healthy food really didn't make me feel good. I couldn't, I couldn't digest vegetables, um, you know, so yeah, I had some strange relationships with food, like my comfort food would be toast, because I didn't feel like eating anything else, like that's what I used to be like, um, so now that I'm healthy digestively, I can eat what I want, it doesn't, nothing bothers me anymore, which is really cool, um, but I still had some food relationship issues, so yeah, I feel like doing the week-long fast was really therapeutic, and I just kind of booked the week to be, I call it my self love week. And I truly like, I went to infrared sauna almost every day, um, just to sweat out toxins. Um, you went drank, to where? Uh, the, uh, infrared sauna. Oh, infrared sauna. Oh, wow. Okay. What's that like? Oh, uh, amazing. Uh, absolutely amazing. But I had to drink a lot of water cause I sweat it a lot. <laughs> mm -hmm. So the whole idea is that when you're like detoxifying for a whole week like that with only drinking water, um, you, you know, your body can release a lot of toxins, a lot of damaged cells, um, and just, it's like a reboot, like, you know, just healing process. Were you still taking your vitamins? Yes. I took, I took my vitamins okay. and, um, but that's all I took. So I took kind of at the same times a day, like still like in the morning and at night, you still took them same yep. schedule. Yep. Okay. Yep. Did you have any and caffeine or coffee or was it just water? I didn't. I had a few times, but I usually like to have cream in my coffee and I don't really like black coffee. So it wasn't really appealing to me. Um, I did a lot of tea. It was really interesting too, because I wasn't all that hungry. Like hunger becomes not a non-issue. But um, what was interesting for me is that I have two teenage boys and they need to eat and they, they'll cook for themselves. But I felt like you know, I need to still make some, like some meals during the week. Right. Yeah. So cooking was a bit of an issue. And that's when I would get hungry is when I had to cook. So I'd cook and then get the hell out of the kitchen. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? Like in the beginning, like I couldn't be around other people who were eating crap food or, you know what I mean? 
Um, but now it's the point where like I can cook, like if my wife wants to have like some pasta or rice or, or I'll even go shop, I'll get the bread. I'll, I'll make her toast. What, what, even if I'm not going to have it, it used to be like, if I'm making it, I'm going to make it for two. And I'm, but now it's like, I'll make it. I'm just like, I actually kind of enjoy making it. Like I like the smell of the bread and everything, but I don't need to eat it. It's like, I don't have that emotional attachment, which I, I, I can't even explain like how satisfying and how gratifying and like the power and, and it's not even just discipline, but it's, it's like knowledge. It's like, I don't look at food just for how it's going to taste. It's how is this, how is my body going to respond? What mm-hmm. hormones is this going to tell? Is my hypothalamus going to tell my pancreas to produce? Right. Yeah. It's like, it's like, Ooh, how, it's not, how do I want to feel in the next five minutes, but how do I want to feel for the next couple of hours or tomorrow? And it's, um, now do you, do you feel like you're, I mean, after going through a week long fast, I'm sure there's all kinds of benefits. And I've, I've watched some of Dr. Fung's uh, YouTube videos. His books are kind of on my next up list. Have you, you, you went through his complete guide to fasting. Did you go, he's got a couple other ones on like specifically on like diabetes and stuff. Yeah, he does the diabetic, diabe, diabetic code and the obesity code. I, if I was going to read just one of his books, which one would you recommend? Um, probably the obesity code. Okay. I like that one a lot. Um, and then, yeah, I mean, the diabetic code is kind of like along the same lines, it just gets yeah. a little bit more into that particular disease. But the obesity code was good. And then uh, the complete guide to fasting is good too, because a lot of people like, I kind of kept it quiet too, because a lot of people really judge you when you say you're not going to eat anything. They're like, well, what do you mean you're not eating? I'm like, well, it's a lot of fast. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, um, even my husband by day five, I remember one morning he like reached over and t- he's like, just check and see if you're still alive. I'm like, I'm not going to die. <laughs> so, so Dr. Fung is in the book. Does he talk about, um, I'm sure he talks about like autophagy and like, yeah. can, so can you give, can you give like kind of an overview of what that is and like why it's something people might actually care about? Cause I'm like fascinated with it. I don't know that I, um, have the best explanation of exactly what it is, how it works, um, but uh, take a crack at yeah, it. Yeah, I'm trying to think of how I can like sum that up really easily. Um, All right, well, I'll help you out, then you like kind of fill in the gaps. And um, I, the way I understand aut- autophagy, it's basically just y- your cells die off and your cells basically yeah. eat themselves, okay? So yeah. if you are deprived, if you're in a fast and you're depriving your body of nutrients, um, your body actually starts to break down and people f- have this perception, oh, you're just going to waste away. You're going to lose all your muscle. Actually, that's not what happens. What they've discovered, uh, and, and if you don't know this stuff, like don't be like, oh my gosh, how come I don't know this stuff? Some of this stuff has only really kind of come to light over the last decade or so. Yeah. Um, guy won a Nobel Prize a few years back for like discovery of uh, um, uh, they were working with this cancer drug called rapamycin and how it would attach to, um, um, they call it uh, mTOR, mammalian uh, target of rapamycin. And don't ask me to explain that. Like, go read Dr. Paul's <laughs> book. Um, go subscribe to the Dr. P- Peter Atia podcast where they talk about all this stuff. Um, but when you deprive yourself of food, when you're in a fast, your, your cells start to eat themselves and break down. And you can actually, if, you know, keep yourself hydrated and stuff. You can actually build muscle and, and get all kinds of benefits, including, you know, muscle growth. Um, you, 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 you get this autophagy going. Um, you get mental clarity like you wouldn't believe. That's why I love to talk about your mental. Because, like, for me, so, I freaked out a little bit. Like, I'm like, I'm not eating. I thought I, and I had a couple moments where I got hungry but it passed like 30 minutes later. And I'm like, Oh my gosh. Like I, I felt like I could so to hear that you went for like seven days is amazing. Cause I went for like a day and a half and I felt like I could have kept going, but I was just like, I don't know. I just, I freaked out a little bit and I just like, I better read something cause I hadn't read the book yet. And yeah, I was kind of so like, like by oh. day, like by day three, four, like I had really great energy, like really just a lot of clarity, really energetic. Um, But then towards the end of it, for me, I felt like just a little bit more tired. And I allowed that for myself because I had done one before and I'd only gotten to like, I think 84 hours and I felt really lightheaded that day. And then I ended up breaking my fast because 
I was a little scared. Like I was like, oh, I don't know. I don't feel good. Like I just felt like I would want to sit down and not be up walking around. And yeah. But I also think that I, I'm like I haven't been tested for this, but just in the way that I react to foods when I eat them, especially with sugar intake, I would say that I'm like um, insulin. Like I have some resistance, insulin resistance happening in my body. Um, so you know, for me, as the fast kept going, I kind of felt like I just wanted to rest. Yeah. Like, you know, and, and I was okay with that. Like I didn't go play hockey that week. I, I just said to myself, you know, I'm just going to take this time and let my body just do its thing. I'm going to listen to it. And if I want to rest, I'll rest. So that's yeah. kind of what I did. I didn't get that. Like some people talk about by day six, seven, like having like amazing energy. That wasn't for me. Like three, four right. day, three, four, I had great energy. And then towards the end of it, I kind of just really wanted to just kind of like hunker down and rest a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. All right. Well, let's, I don't want to get too sidetracked. We're here talking about water, but I'm, Sorry. As you can see, I'm no, 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 no. I'm, I'm fascinated. Water. <laughs> I, it does apply to water. I'm fascinated by this. And I feel, I just feel like I have to give a disclaimer. If you're watching this in the replay or on here live, if you want to do a fast, like um, there's a whole lot of components to that. Like I would read some of these books I would talk to a healthcare professional, you know, don't just go off and try and do this and be like, oh, Hannibal said I could do a fast. No, 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 no. It's not what I'm saying. Yes, I've done a little bit of fasting. Julie, you've heard Julie's story, you know, get inspired by that. If you want to look into some of these benefits, yeah. I, I do I definitely see it as a plateau busting tool to have yeah. in your arsenal. Um, but I actually, I always tell people too, I didn't do it for the weight loss. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't do the week long fast for the weight loss. I did it for my health the health benefits that come along with it that I researched and found out about. It wasn't so that I could, you know, lose, you know, I lost a bunch of weight and I put some weight back on when I got done my fast when I start to incorporate more food. Right. Um, but if you do want to try a few days, I, there's an app called zero and I really like that because I actually plugged in how many hours I wanted to go, what my goal was. So then when I got to the point where I was like, you know, I was into it like 120 hours. It's like, only have to go to 168 hours. Like I got this, you know what I mean? So it kind of, yeah, just in my mind, it was nice to look at the app and say, okay, like I'm halfway through, like this is cool. So there's different Very little cool. tricks like that. Yeah. Awesome. Well, Julie, I appreciate you sharing all that. That was kind of a, a little extra bonus talking about the fast thing. So thank you for, uh, thanks for sharing that experience with us. Um, let's go on over to uh, New Jersey. Steven Nagin, what's going on, my man? How you feeling? Then we'll come to you, Beverly. Uh, you're still muted, Steven. Let me unmute you. Hey, we got you now. Hey, how are you doing? I'm doing amazing. Good, good to have you on here. How you feeling? You have a good week? Yeah, I'm pretty good. I lost three pounds. Woohoo! Three pounds. Back, three. back from Florida. No more messing around. You're, you're focused again now, huh? Yeah. Awesome. What, um, What's what's working well for you? What what do you what are you trying to focus on on a daily basis that's helping you stay focused? I'm trying to take the drops every single morning again. Mm -hmm. I'm taking those drops every single day. Trying to get back in that habit. Those it helps, drops, man, it helps. Uh, those drops, and we're gonna next week. We're gonna talk about supplements a little bit, and we'll kind of dive deeper into that. Um, what about water? Are you are you keeping track of how much water you're drinking? About three a day. I know I have to do more. Yeah. Well, see that just the fact that you know how much you're drinking, like I'm proud of you for that. Like, you know, you're keeping track of it. You know, that you're drinking three liters and you're hearing the benefits of, of dialing that up to four is going to make a difference. It's going to make you feel more full. You're not going to be as hungry. It's going to be good for your cells. It's going to be good for detox. Yeah. You're going to have to urinate more frequently and you got to kind of, you know, plan that out. Your kidneys are going to take a little getting used to, um, but it's worth it. You know, and I'm also taking a detox too. Oh the, oh, the Restorex. Okay. Are you doing that first thing in the morning? Are you doing it at night? Or? I actually do it at nighttime. At nighttime. Yeah. For me, from a lifestyle perspective, it's just more convenient for me to take it at night, kind of like the last thing I do before I go to bed. Um, I will say, though, during the first 30 days, I was doing it twice a day. I would do it first thing in the morning, and then an hour later, I would have breakfast, and I would also do it an hour before dinner. And I think that really helped me kickstart, but I lost 30 pounds in 30 days, and I was like, whoa, this is crazy. Like, I don't know that I have that much more weight to lose. So I kept taking it. 
Um, but now I just take it at night. I take it at night, um, kind of first thing before bed. I should try that right before supper, no, before supper. I should try that. Yeah. I what about you? Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I should do that right before supper. Yeah. Do you have, um, uh, now, it, it, just, just so you know, if you're, t and again, we'll talk more about supplements next week, but if you're taking any medication, you don't want to take your medication within that same two hour window because it kind of makes it less effective because the stuff is powerful. Like that charcoal powder, it like it sucks all the toxins and like all that stuff out of your blood. So if you have like medication that you need to take, if you're taking that in the morning, like don't take the, the, the charcoal That's powder. That's what I've been doing. I've been taking my medication. It's, it's, been with, it's been within that period that you said I've been taking it. So maybe I, I should do it like you said. Yeah, so let's split, make sure you split that up. Otherwise, you're not going to get like the full benefit that that you should be getting from your from the medicines you're taking. Um, what about apple cider vinegar? Do you do you keep that in the house? Apple cider vinegar? Yeah, we just purchased it. Okay, apple cider vinegar is. I mean, uh, I like it because it kind of makes the water taste better. So I usually have at least one uh, glass of water with a couple tablespoons of apple cider vinegar. I usually put some in my green juice in the morning too, but uh, at least one or two servings of apple cider vinegar a day. Um, all kinds of benefits, lowers your blood, blood sugar, sugar can help with digestion. Um, and I like to do that before bedtime too. Uh, and if you're just like, you know, like Frank, like guys like Frank, like, ah, I don't like the way water tastes and they just get bored with it. It kind of mixes up the taste too, so. I, I don't buy water, but to think of me, I have to have a cold. And you always cold water, cold. I can drink a lot. Yeah. That's the way I am. If it's, if it's lukewarm, I, I have a hard time. If it's cold, I can drink a lot. I can keep drinking, drinking. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Well, three pounds, man. That's good. Let's keep, yeah. let's, string, let's string a few of these weeks together. Next thing you know, you're going to be a momentum, my man. Yep. I'll get it there. Awesome. Well, there. I pre we appreciate you checking in. Thanks, Steven. No problem. Talk to you later. Bye -bye. All right. Uh, Beverly, Beverly Shields. How are you doing, my friend? I am well. Am I, am I, can you hear me? We got you loud and clear. Okay. I am doing well. I am doing the ab challenge. Day three is in the books. Uh, the book, right? <laughs> I, I debated whether I should do this because I do have problems with the squats because of the, um, the ankle I broke. It's, it's, a little bit weaker than the other one so i can't squat as as low so uh, -huh. uh but anyway i am trying i am i am doing it and and squatting as much as i can um so are you what well, and that's cool have you seen jason's videos in the yeah yeah now you know that he's got those on like super super fast speed up like don't you don't need to do it as fast as he's doing you, you know what i mean right jason if you're watching this we all know that you're like one of the x-men you're a mutant uh dude's got a six pack already like he shouldn't even be allowed to participate uh but no i love having him in here because uh he's motivation for for me because if you guys watch me a video of me doing that stuff it would be painful uh jason just makes it look easy well, it, it, it's painful for me as well. At 61, getting down on the floor to do, <laughs> to do that, it's, it's a comedy. It's comedy, pure comedy. <laughs> but I'm doing it. Very cool. As for, um, as for the water, um, I have always been a water drinker. I gave up. Um, I gave up pop and all that years ago. So I've always drank water, but I never knew that I wasn't drinking enough water until I started this. And then now I'm really, um, I'm really working hard to get the water in. My problem is, is I also take diuretics. And so uh, you talking about, uh, uh, I sit and I go to the bathroom. I sit and I go to the bathroom. I sit. <laughs> it's uh, it gets to be old quite quite frequently, and especially during the night because I do have to wake up a couple of times during the night. Uh, but the water has been my um, has been one of the things that I have been working on um, more, and I'm getting better at it. How much, 
How much salt do you get? Do you put salt on your food? Um, only a only a little bit while cooking. I don't I don't put extra salt on anything. I and sometimes I try to use salt substitutes. So, you know, everybody's got you know different health stuff going on, but uh, like I've actually surprisingly started adding a lot of salt. So I, now I use like the higher quality. So I'm using like the sea salt or the pink mm -hmm. Himalayan sea salt in like the grinder, but I'll put, I'll put pink Himalayan sea salt in my coffee. I'll put a little sea salt in my, uh, in my green juice. I cook with a little bit more salt. Um, I put extra salt on my, on my salads and I, there's something to getting those extra minerals uh, in there that 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 seems to help. Um, so I don't know if that's something you've ever experimented with, or have you have you purposely? Done well, it? I heard it last week. I heard you last week talking about putting a little bit of salt in your green juice. Yeah. So what I started um, since that time is putting a little bit, uh, putting some um, uh, vinegar and a little bit of that Himalayan salt um, uh, grinder. I grind a couple little bit, a little bit in there yep. and the, um, and the, and the vinegar, apple cider vinegar. And I'll tell you, I never liked, I know you guys like that taste of that green juice. I never liked it, but I love it with the, uh, with the apple cider vinegar. It really tastes better. It, you know what it does? It makes a difference. It makes a difference. For yeah. Sure. And, and you're, you're doing the greens, right? The giving greens drink. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So the giving greens drink just by itself, it can be kind of blah, you know, I, mm -hmm. I like the way it tastes. Um, but for me, like the perfect recipe is, and I just shake it up in a, I got this from Neil. He's, he, he uses like the Bubby's sauerkraut jars, leftover jars, or you can use a Mason jar or whatever. You really don't need a blender because it, uh, but it's nice to have something to kind of shake it up in. Right. Uh, you can just mix it up with a spoon, but I like just kind of shaking it up um, in a bottle or, or a jar. But I put eight to t eight to ten ounces of water. I'll put a couple of ice cubes in there too. Two scoops of the Giving Greens, uh, a couple tablespoons of apple cider vinegar, a shake of some sea salt, and then I put a little bit of cayenne pepper in there too because that acts as a thermogenic and kind of boosts your metabolism. Shake all that up, and then I pour it back into the glass over ice and I, I sip on that. And to me, it's, I mean, it's, it's a tasty treat. I, I enjoy sipping it cause I'm, I don't have to like actually, I don't have to clean my juicer anymore. Like my juicer is collecting dust sitting on the, uh, uh, sitting on the kitchen counter. Um, I pull it out for special occasions when I, when I feel like going shopping for green produce, but, uh, but that's great. I'm glad you found something that uh, I, I'm, gl I'm glad you like the taste now. Yeah, and I like I like to drink um I like a cup of hot tea in the morning and I've taken a shake and a little bit of cayenne pepper in my hot tea. Um have you tried the giving greens hot? I have not. It's good. It's good. So like what what I've done too is um uh I've done um it's so like heat up some hot water, pour the hot water in there with the greens, get it all mixed up. And then what I'll also do on Sundays is I'll get some uh, some ginger, and you can like mince up the ginger, or you can just slice it, and and it kind of makes kind of like a ginger tea, right? Mm -hmm. um, and then so I add in the ginger, I add in the cayenne, I add in the apple cider vinegar, um, and it's 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 a different kind of green tea that you're sipping on. You know what I mean? It's like you truly mm -hmm. got the veggies, the veggies in there. So. Um, uh, it's worth experimenting. Let me know if you like that. Yeah, I'll try that. Very cool. Uh, anything Anything else you want to share with us or questions or anything else? No, um, I'm, I'm right now just holding firm at that, at that 21 pounds. I'm a little bit, I go up a day, down a day, a pound or two. I go from week to week and I think it depends on the, the amount of stress I have that week. Uh, I'm, I'm a little bit stressed. I've uh, been a little bit stressed this year. Um, my mother fell, broke her ankle and um, she's 83. So it's been um, 
sort of a, a real stressful time for us because she's not getting around and we're having to be more of the caregivers. So I've been carrying around a little bit of that stress. So, <laughs> but you know, it's real. So. it's real because it triggers the cortisol levels and your yep. hormones mm -hmm. out of whack. And yeah, it's, um, it, that's, that's real. Some people would say, Oh, just suck it up. That doesn't, no, that that's real. You have to address that stuff. So yeah, um, it's good that you, you at least, you at least recognize that. Well, very cool. I appreciate you sharing all that with us, uh, Beverly. Um, I know I'm looking in the chat box here. I know Neil had a question. Julie, I don't know if you're, st if you're still on, Neil was asking, uh, when you're doing the water fast, how much water a day do you drink? Are you still kind of going for the half your body weight in ounces, or are you actually increasing the water amount during those days? Oh, uh, um, yeah, I increased it for sure because when I did the sauna treatments, I like I had to replace all the water I was sweating out. So mm -hmm. I don't know if I I didn't measure it, but I would say I was probably like four or five or maybe even six liters of water a day. I just, I was drinking water all the time. And, yeah. um, and the other thing I forgot to mention was that I did use the drops the whole time. Oh, okay. So the accelerate and the, and the, the slender X and the accelerate to kind of keep your metabolism going. Yeah. And, and yeah. I tell people like, I have a few friends that want to try doing a longer fast and I'm like, you need to have the drops. Like, I don't know if I would have been successful as what I was doing a week long fast without the mm -hmm. drops, because they really helped. Like when I did have hunger, um, I would take the drops and my mind would be completely off of it again. Like it wasn't even, <clears throat> so it really helped me get through any periods, especially what, before I would go cook a meal for my family, mm -hmm. I would take the slender eyes and I was just like able to cruise through it. So. Very cool. Well, guys, thanks for those tips. Um, Julie, if you, if you, uh, I really appreciate sharing all the info on fasting. If you want to post anything in the longevity uh, uh, group coaching mastermind um, or in the comments, once I put up the, uh, yep. the replay here about that book that, that really helped you out. I mean, is I'm kind of taking mental notes, I would say before somebody does a fast, in addition to, you know, talk to your healthcare provider and um, read that book, read that book from Dr. Fung, um, be prepared to increase your water. Uh, intake, uh, consider maybe adding these drops because it sounds like that was good. And so. the other thing that I would say too, and I can post this in the, in the comment section, but um, like find someone to do it with. A buddy. Yep. Right on. So guys, if anybody's interested in doing this, um, I, I think that, I think that's a great idea. Um, just, and it's, again, it's not just for weight loss, but for breaking through some of those plateaus, the overall health benefits, Julie talked about, you know, cancer prevention. It's been shown to help with things like that. Um, and then for me, just the mental clarity, the mental clarity and the focus, that was something that really surprised me. Yeah. I thought I would feel like, like preoccupied and distracted because I'm hungry, but I actually felt really zoned in. Um, it's weird. But, uh, and the other thing I would say too, um, when like, you know, don't get freaked out by the week long one, but do some of those 48 hours, like, a good time for me was to start like I would eat my last meal Saturday night and I do this still quite often. I eat my last meal Saturday night. I fast all day, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday morning, break my fast. So like try a few of those, get those under your belt and know how you're going to feel. And then just mm -hmm. kind of say, okay, next time I'm going to try it and add like another 12 hours or whatever. Yep. Very cool. All right, friends, we're going to wrap this up. I appreciate you guys. Uh, this will be posted in the Facebook group and also under Module 3, uh, under the Five Daily Disciplines in Your Longevity uh, Access, Members Only Access Area. Next week, we'll dig into talking about supplements. So come with all your questions about supplements. And um, can't wait to see you guys soon. And stay with us with this abs challenge. Tomorrow is day, day four. Um, and uh, even, if, even if you're late to the party, just jump right in. Just jump right in day four. You can do this, all right? We'll see you guys soon. Bye-bye.